Yep, yep. It's that time again when we're going to be sharing with our women of excellence. Trying to get the page. Yep. We're going to continue our series on um, Leah and Rachel that we've been enjoying so much. At least I've been enjoying it. You know, the word has been really blessing me, blessing my heart a lot. Um, Taj said, I'm not supposed to say this, <laughs> but Taj, I'm going to say it. I'm still trying to get this thing right. Remember, social media is easier for younger people. I'm not young anymore, past the youthful stage. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying um, this story, and I'm just asking you to share, share, share right now uh, before I get started. I don't want to play a YouTube song. Yeah, um, maybe I should, but I don't want to play a song because I have to be saying to people, this is not my song. Um, I don't own the rights to this song. I don't own the rights to this lyrics. I didn't help the writer to write this song. I didn't help the musicians to play the music. I didn't, uh, no, no, no. Not my thing. I, I can't be bothered going through that. Because again, if Facebook knew me personally, they would know that Caron cannot sing to save her life. So the music part is not my thing. And I am good with staying in my lane, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with what I'm able to do. And I'm also fine with what I'm not able to do. Now, some things I can learn. Of course, I can learn how to um, even just connect this little thing um, better. Facebook or, or, or um, connecting with, with the live on YouTube. I'll get it right. Don't worry about it. Um, I will. I will get it right. If you're on, just want to say thanks for joining. Thanks for being here with me. And for those who have been sending in your encouragement and um, your, you know, just your, your little ideas. There are some who message me or inbox me to say they've been ministered to or um, give me a little suggestion whether about lighting or the background i appreciate every single one of your um suggestions and um your your words of encouragement to me as i said um the word has been really ministering to me a lot believe me it has been ministering to me a lot um and you know um I'm just thinking that Jacob and his family, I'm, I'm just looking at their life and just the things that happened along the way. And even as he journeyed and journeyed and journeyed, as he continued, we saw that a part of his journey was heading to Bethel with his family. And I feel, you know, it, it's a journey we can take. It's a journey we can take, like so many thousands of years later, just reading the word of God, we can make that conscious decision that we too are going to take this journey. It is quite a spiritual journey. Now I just want to go ahead and read. I'm going to be looking at Genesis chapter uh, 30. Um, let me see. Genesis chapter 29 today, and I'm going to be reading from verse 31 to 35. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben. For she, she said, surely the Lord hath looked upon my affliction. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. 
if you're listening again, go ahead and share this video. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, because the Lord has heard that I was hated, he has therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, now this time will my husband be joined unto me because I have borne him three sons. Therefore was his name called Levi. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she says, now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah and she left bearing. Again, um, this is just an awesome story. It is just so powerful. And every single one of us as women can see uh, something about us in the life of Leah. Not just Leah, but Rachel, but we already examined the life of Rachel. And every time we look at somebody in the Bible, um, we can see a reflection of ourselves. And one of the things I practice to do, even when I'm reading the word, is that even when there is a character that is evil or not doing the will of God, we can still find lessons from them and we can also still see their strengths. I remember many years ago, I, I ministered a, a message. It, the theme was the strength of a woman. And I looked at Jezebel and I looked also at her strengths because yes, she had her strengths. Obviously she was very um, persuasive. She was a persuasive writer and she used pen and paper. She was somebody also that um, even though she helped in the wrong way, but she knew she was there to help her husband. So those were some of the things I personally look at. And yes, with the um, opportunity to be able to help my husband, let me help in a right way. With the gift to be persuasive in words or writing, let me do the right thing. Let me not write to slander. Let me not write to hurt. Let me not write to sneer or let me not write to lie on somebody, but let me write. So, you know, let me write letters so that I can do things that will benefit the kingdom of God or help persons. So we can be very helpful with our gifts or we can hurt. And the decision lies ultimately with you and your heart. And we're talking about Leah. Hmm? Leah was unloved. Leah was not preferred. She was not chosen. She, um, she was second to Rachel. But with all that, and um, when, we, when we look at it, and I did share something of that effect earlier this this week. I don't want us to consider Jacob as a cruel man because reading the word of God, um, that's not my opinion of him. This was a young man who he desired a, a wife, you know, and if you desire a wife, you desire a good thing. And when you find one, it's a good thing, right? He desired a wife. And it's okay to desire to have someone. It's, it's okay to desire to have a spouse. It was a good desire. Um, he saw somebody who was the object of his affection, someone who he wanted. The minute he looked at her, he favored Rachel. He desired Rachel. He asked for Rachel. He was tricked into marrying um, Leah. So being fair to him, I am sure he must have been hurting too. Um, and I said that earlier with Rachel, that having worked for seven long years and to not be rewarded, most of us would be upset. A lot of people leave church and be like, I was the choir director for how long and they don't appreciate me. Um, what is appreciation? It's a form of reward. It's not monetary, but... Um, but it is a form of 
reward. Um, I was on the Usher board for how long and I don't feel they love me. What is that? It's, it's reward in the form of affection. So we all like to be rewarded. So before you think that you are more righteous than Jacob to be in a position to judge him just for a minute just put yourself in his situation what if you worked for seven years to not receive a reward some of us are not even going to sit and wait for seven years to see if we will be re rewarded as long as we don't get what we desire or get what we think we wanted we think it's time to pack our bags and to move on we do not under understand commitment we do not understand loyalty we do not understand how what it means to be faithful faithful to someone faithful on a job or loyal faithful to a ministry or loyal we do not understand that especially in today's society where we are always seeking for a quick fix everything has to be now give it to me right now if i cannot get it right now i am leaving i am moving lord bless me with children open my womb if you don't open my womb now i'm going to stop serving you so it's always this bargain if i don't get what i want i will do what i want to do again i'm asking you if you're listening go ahead and share this video appreciate it very much um you help us to grow when you share uh our videos now leah as i said um it's just like any any one of us she's an ordinary woman she she wanted to be desired. She desired the affection of her husband. She desired to be loved. She desired to be noticed. She desired to be beautiful. The word of God says that her sister was beautiful. It spoke of her form. It spoke of her appearance, but it spoke of her eyes. But Leah had dull eyes. She never measured up at all with her sister. It's like, you know, like they would say today, Rachel is hot. You say that the young people will understand it, but Leah was not. It's either you're hot or, or you're not. There's no in-between. And she didn't get the chance to have an in-between. She was disappointed because she did not find the love that she was seeking after. She did not find the attention that she was seeking after. And not only did she have a desire that was not met, that led to her disappointment, but she also had to make a decision in the end. Will I continue to wallow in um, sorrow? Will I continue to wallow in my disappointment? Will I continue to be consumed by my pain and just think about nothing but the fact that I am not loved? Or will I decide that in spite of what is happening, I am going to praise God? So we see she had to make a decision in the end. With all that life dished at her with all that life handed her uh, she had to make a decision because one of the things she will learn is that beauty does not guarantee that she would live a pain-free life and why can i say that because of course her sister was beautiful but she did not have a pain-free life uh, she was beautiful. She was beautiful to look upon. She was fair. She was fair in form. Her facial feature, I mean, from the minute Jacob looked at this woman, he fell in love with her. But it did not mean that it would take away her pain. So Leah, even if you are as beautiful as your sister Rachel, there is something else that you would have to be worried about. Because while Rachel was beautiful, she too had her problems. She too had her struggles because she could not conceive. So there is no like everybody has it all made all perfect everyone has a battle that they're fighting and this is what we need to understand and i want to say this before i forget when you look at the two sisters they both had battles that they were fighting one was fighting for the affection of her husband while the other was fighting to have children how about us coming together as women as sisters as women of excellence and helping each other and encouraging each other and understanding that we each have our own battles they are not the same but we are fighting nonetheless and we have one common enemy and if we start to understand that we will support each other as a 
supposed to tear each other down. I mean, we will encourage each other. We will have word of encouragement, which is life, as opposed to speaking death to each other, as opposed to making our words poisonous. We already have life that is so full of trouble. Job says a man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Let us be a source of encouragement and a source of life to each other, because while you might be able to have children and you are bearing and bearing children you might lack the beauty and the grace that you need and I might be so beautiful on the outside but on the inside there is nothing you know like in Matthew 3 when Jesus said he was speaking to the Pharisees and the scribes he says on the outside is this whited sepulchre whitewashed but on the inside is nothing but dead men bones there are some people like that they pay a lot of attention to the outside they pay a lot of attention to their makeup they pay pay a lot of attention to their hair. They pay a lot of attention to their skin, but on the inside is rotten. On the inside is nothing but dead men's bone. On the inside is nothing more than other people's business and gossip. Uh, and poisonous and toxins, my God. But we want not just to work on the outside as women of God, we want to work on the inside. We want to be beautiful inside out because nothing is more fulfilling or satisfying. Not having children, not, not, not having the love of your husband. There is nothing that is more satisfying than fulfilling the will of God and knowing what your purpose is. If you have the love of a husband and you don't know your purpose, I can tell you there is still a void on the inside of you. If you have the love of your children and you do not know what your purpose is, there is still a void on the inside. You could have all the money in the world. If you are not fulfilling your purpose, there is a void on the inside. And you see, sometimes with this void, we try to fill it with man's affection. We try to fill it with man's um, attention. And when we seek to fill that void that only God can fill, and this is why in the world today, people are so unsatisfied. They can never be satisfied. They will do everything seeking for satisfaction. I remember years ago, there was a song that says, I can't get no satisfaction as I try try, try, try. Yeah, you're going to keep, keep on trying because the only satisfaction there is in the world today is satisfaction in God. This is why you will find the rich man, the poor man will think if I have money, I will better, be better off and I will be happier. But you will find the rich man committing suicide. You will find the rich man being addicted to drug or alcohol. You find the poor man being unsatisfied. You find the poor man committing suicide. You find the poor man being addicted to drug or to alcohol. Why? Because there is a void on the inside of man that only God can feel, not your husband, not your children, not your degrees, not your job. It doesn't matter what you do, where you go, that void can only be filled by God. Mm -hmm. And this is the realization that we must come to. So Leah's problem was not necessarily that she lacked outer beauty. It was that she needed a makeover on the inside. It wasn't an outward makeover that was needed. It was an inward makeover. The way she looked at life, the way she looked at other people, that is what is important. And whenever you find that and fill that void with God, with the love of God, with the things of God, you will find yourself a satisfied woman, a satisfied person. It doesn't matter whose love you don't have. It doesn't matter whose attention you cannot get. As a matter of fact, we do not seek the attention of man. We just want to know that God is pleased with us. We do not seek the favor of man. We seek the favor of God. We seek the blessing of God in our lives because who God bless, no man can curse. No man can curse you when God places blessing on you. It doesn't matter what they say about you. It doesn't matter how they try to tear you down. It doesn't matter how they try to defame you. It doesn't matter how they try to mock and scorn you as long as you have the favor of God as 
strong as God pronounce a blessing on your life. Uh, in blessing, he will bless you. My God, when God blesses you, no man can put a curse on you. No witch can put a curse on you. No witch doctor can put a curse on you. No obia man or obia woman can put a curse on you. My God, it doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter what they said about you when you were young. It doesn't matter the names that they called you. If you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge God he will direct your path your pain will result in result in your gain Leah I want to say that to a Leah that's listening to me today that your pain is going to result in your game don't look at the mockeries don't look at the competitors don't look at those who are trying to compete with you you know why I can say that to you Leah today because Rachel was always competing with the woman of God she competed you know with the children and I need to have children and if I don't have children I'll die my God and she looked at you Leah though you were unloved though you were not ch chosen though you were not man's favorite my God but when you turn your heart to God there are doors that God will open for you that man cannot shut because according to revelations when God opened a door no man can shut that door and let me tell you something about your competitors they're going to die competing with you Leah I want to say that to you again, Leah, that your competitors will die competing with you. They want to do the job that they see you doing because you make that job look easy, right? I'm sure to thought that childbearing was easy. You make what you have to do look easy, regardless of the pain that you have to go through, regardless of the tears, regardless of the suffering, regardless of the, the crying and the sorrow and the pain. Leah, you make it look easy. And what you lived through, Rachel died in it. Let me tell you something. There is somebody who is giving you hell right now. Everything you try to do, they try to put you down. My God, they try to curse you when God has already pronounced a blessing on you. They compete with everything that you do, but give them the job to do. And a half of what you do will kill them. A half of what you do and they fall over. A half of what you do and they leave the church and say they're under pressure because everything pastor calling on them but yet you look at Leah you look at Leah and you're envious you look at Leah and you're jealous my god it might be on your job they look at you and they are jealous of you because my god you are from one promotion to the next and they try everything to tear you down they try to kill you they try to hurt you they try to defend your character but Leah look to Jesus because in the end there is victory if you hold on a little while longer because Rachel cannot do what you can do my God you had four sons from your own womb my God and a daughter and you had two sons from the womb of one of your maid Rachel on the second son on the second childbirth she died she couldn't live up to what you do Leah and why people hate you they can't do what you do don't worry about your haters don't worry about people who try to sneer you. They say that you're ugly. They say whatever they want to say about you, Leah. They say that your eyes are dull because they see the pain in your eyes. They look at you and they see you desire to be loved. All you desire is for someone to pay you some attention. All you desire is for someone to say to you, hi, Leah, how are you doing today? All you desire is the affection. And there is nothing wrong with the desire that you have because every woman who has a husband would desire to be loved of her husband. I want to say to you, if you are listening and you are married, that your husband cannot fill your void. And this is why sometimes we have so much problem in marriage because we are looking to a husband for what only God can do. We are looking to a husband to give us only what God can give. But when we learn to get down into prayer and we get down into fasting and we learn to seek the face of God because like Leah, in our lives we will only find out 
out uh, that there is some things uh, that only God can do for you. Uh, there is an affection that you need. Uh, there is a love that you need. Uh, there is an embrace that you need uh, that only God can give it to you, Leah. There's a joy that you seek after. My God, somebody says, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away from me. One day you'll be able to say like that. When you look back over your life and you think it over, over when you roll back the curtains of memories and you see where God brought you from and you see where you could have been and you know if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side when men rose up against me they would have swallowed me up when they rose up against you when they told lie on you when they lied on you on your job they would have swallowed you up but if it had not been for the Lord Leah who was on your side Somebody said, tell me where would I be? Tell me where would I be if Jesus didn't love me? Tell me where would I be if he didn't care? Tell me where would I be if he didn't sacrifice his life? Oh, but I'm so glad that he did. Leah, what you can do is what will kill your enemy. Though they hate you, they are jealous of you, they mock you, they sneer you, they laugh at you, Leah, because you are not beautiful. You don't measure up to their standard, my God. You, 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 you won't have access to their relationship because of what? You don't measure up to their standard. You don't have the level of education to be a part of their group. My God, you don't have the beauty. You don't have the clothes. You don't have the money. Your car is not fancy enough, so you're not good enough for their company, Leah. But let me tell you something. God is about to do great things in your life. God is about to give you a miracle, Leah. Now, what want to look at her because she was going through so much. My God, when you think about it, she was given to a man that didn't love her. She didn't ask for this, but, but Jacob's uncle tricked him and he gave him Leah. She was hated, my God. She was so unloved that a man wouldn't look at her and naturally desire her. I remember Isaiah 53 that says he was without form and he was without comeliness. I remember Genesis 1 that says the world was without form and void and darkness covered the face of the deep. My God, but when you have a word of the Lord, because all God said in Genesis was let there be light and there was light and he went on out of the void to form the world. My God, the word tells us that he made man out of the dust of the earth. Something, my God, that was so insignificant. Something that we walk on. People may walk on you right now, but you'll be surprised to see what God is about to make of your life. Let them walk on you all they want to. Let them consider you to be insignificant. Look at me. I am made of the dust. The word of God says from dust we came and we will return to the dust. Mighty God. And when you think about it, God was able to use the dust of the earth and form man and breathe the breath of life into man and he became a living in soul. I want to say it to Aaliyah right now. Your life might look like the dust of the earth. You look like you are nothing. Everybody think that you are nothing but a mat that they can walk upon. They walk all over your name. They talk about you. They talk about your marriage. They talk about the fact that Jacob doesn't love you. They talk about the fact that you are not chosen. They talk about the fact that if your daddy didn't trick your husband, you wouldn't be married today. And they have all sorts of reasons reason to say why you got that job, why you got your house, why you got your car, or why you were even married. They have all sorts of things to say about you, Leah. But today I want to say to you that God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And just like he was able to form mighty God, man out of the dust, look at what God is about to do in your life. Look at what he's going to able to form out of you or out of your life. Just look at what God is about to do. Do Leah. God is about to make form of your life. He's about to breathe into your life and the things in your life that are dead, they will come to life because God is about to breathe upon them. 
love. He will breathe upon your marriage. He will breathe upon your children. He will breathe upon your job. He will breathe upon your finances. All you need is the breath of the Lord. All you really need is a word from the Lord. Somebody said, is there a word from the Lord? I don't care about the word of man. Let them talk all they want to talk. My God, because man will always talk. That's what they have a mouth to do. And as opposed to using it to praise God, they rather to use it to criticize. They rather to use it to mock. They rather to use it to jeer. They rather to use it to tear others down. But Leah, keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on the prize. Don't be distracted by your haters. Don't be distracted by those who don't understand your purpose because where God has you right now, Leah, it is for a reason. It is for a purpose. I want to say to you, go ahead and share the video. If you're a Leah and you're listening, there's another Leah that needs to hear this word today. There's another Leah that needs the word of encouragement. There's another Leah whose life is on the line. There's another Leah who might be thinking of committing suicide. There's another Leah who is thinking of backsliding. There's a Leah who is thinking of running away because no matter what I do, man will not love me. It no matter what I do, they hate me. It doesn't matter what I do. My God, I'm never good enough for them. I cannot find acceptance among them. I cannot find peace. But Leah, the Bible says, because that she was hated, God opened her womb. There's a Leah there today. I want you to change your focus. And this is why I said that Rachel is hot and Leah Leah is not, but what Leah need, mighty God, is a makeover, because I want you to focus on the goodness of God, because while man rejected you, while man scorned you, while man did not want you, while man turned their back on you, God looked on you, Leah, he looked beyond your fault, because God doesn't look on our appearance to love us, he looks beyond your fault, he looks beyond the fact that when man looks at you, he sees the pain in your eyes. God looks and he covered you. The word of God says his banner over me is love. When he looked at me, he loved me. When he looked at me, he says, this is my child. When he looked at me, according to Ezekiel 16, I was wrapped in my own blood, but he took me up. He washed me and he cleansed me. If you're a Leah today, come on. I want you to have a makeover. This is not an outward makeover. This is an internal makeover. This is a makeover from the inside. Mighty God. You know, my little bit tired. I need to remember to talk about that. Yes, it says when Zion travails, she bring forth. I got my tired from Pentecost. I got for showers. If you're listening, please, I need more tired. Anybody coming up, please send my better tired. Thank you very much. Amen. Leah, God has a plan for you. Leah, God has a word for you. Leah, God has great things in store for you. Leah, God has blessing for you. Now God opened her womb and God blessed her with children because man hated her. But guess what? She named her first son and she said his name was Reuben. She called his name Reuben for she said, surely God will look upon my affliction. Now therefore my husband will love me. So she had the first son. She said, because of my affliction, because of my pain, because of my suffering, because so many nights I went to bed hungry. There was no food in the cupboard. The fridge was empty. My God, my bank account was empty. God looked upon my affliction because they mocked and jeer me. If you want to mock and jeer me, mock and jeer me. Because the more you mock and jeer me, my God, God is just opened up to me. He will rent the heavens for me. You don't have to like me because God loves me. Somebody says, I know not why. When I think about it, I only cry. Oh, how he really loves me. Now she called him. Reuben, because God looked upon my affliction. Mighty God, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him from his affliction. God delivered him from all his fears. Leah, you have fears right now. You're afraid. My God, you will not get that job because you're so accustomed to being unloved. You're afraid that you will never marry or find love because you're so accustomed to being unloved. But you said, God looked upon my affliction and no man. Maybe my husband will love me. 
she's still looking for the love of a man in spite of what God was doing in her life, in spite of the fact that God opened her womb, she still wanted the love of a man. What more do you want him to do to prove that he loves you? I remember that song from years back. I don't remember the rest of the word, but Leah, what more do you want God to do to prove to you that he really, really, really loves you? He's opened your womb so now he blesses you with a job but you're still unsatisfied you have a husband but you're still unsatisfied you're still crying you're still in pain mighty god you're still consumed with your problems and your situation god blessed her again now i give you the house and you're not satisfied he bless you with a car he give her another son she called this son <clears throat> My God, she conceived and to be her son and she said this time God heard that I was hated and she called his name Simeon mighty God every time God give her a blessing all that Leah thought about was people all Leah thought about was this man all Leah thought about was this woman even though God kept blessing her he gave you the house you're still worried because they say all sort of thing about your house mighty God your haters and those who will never stop criticizing you let me tell you what leah it doesn't matter what you do they're gonna hate you they're not gonna love you they're never gonna support you they're always gonna speak bad about you stop thinking about people stop thinking about your enemies and keep your eyes on jesus and the things of this world will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace and she's like god heard that i was hated let me tell you they're gonna hate you they hated Jesus Christ himself. If they hate him and we're not greater than our master, he healed the sick, he cleansed the leper, mighty God, he made the lame to walk again and he caused the blind to see, he raised the dead. What more do you want him to do? But in spite of all that Jesus did, there were those who hated him. There were those who always listened to him, not because they wanted wisdom, not because they wanted to grow, not because they wanted a word from God. God, but they listened to him because they wanted an occasion that they might accuse him so they might kill him. Let me tell you something, Leah. You will never live to please man. And she conceived again and bear a son. And now this time she says, now my husband will love me. She called his name Levi, meaning now my husband will be attached to me. Now my husband will be joined to me. Leah, you're still trying to have peace people join to you. You still want my God that when they're going to church, they call you and say they're coming to pick you up. Leah, they're not going to do that for you, sweetheart. They're not going to love you. Now my husband will be joined to me. She called his name Levi. Mighty God. Look at the blessing that God had just given this woman. Levi is who the priestly tribe came out of. And even though she was mother to a priestly tribe, she was still seeking after the love of a man. Whose love are you seeking after, Leah? So much so that you cannot realize the goodness of God in your life. So much so you cannot realize how much you are anointed. So much that you cannot realize how much God has invested in you, that your womb is blessed, that the fruit of your womb is blessed. Let me tell you something. Take your eyes off, man, Leah. What you really need is a makeover on the inside. And she bore so much. She bore so much. She bore children and children and children till she got to the point that she had this child. She realized it doesn't matter what I do. My God, Jacob will not love me. Jacob will not favor me. And she says, I'm going to call his name Judah because now will I praise the Lord. This time when she had children, this time she did not mention her husband. This time she did not mention anybody else because now it was about she and Jesus. Now it was about her love for God. Now it was about her relationship with God. I want to say to a woman who is listening,
again. You're seeking relationship in your family. You're seeking relationships on the job. You're seeking relationship with a husband. You're seeking relationship in your church. But when you start looking to Jesus, the best relationship you could ever have is a relationship with the Lord. That Somebody says, mighty God, I walk in the garden alone and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. He tells me I am his own. He's my husband. He's my lover. He's my friend. He's my everything. He is my all, and what man cannot do for me, Leah, God is able to do exceedingly, more abundantly than you could ever ask or think. The people who are competing with you have lost sight of their destination. Rachel did not make it to the destination. She died in competition with you. She died in childbirth. Let them compete with you all they want. Keep your eyes on Jesus, Leah. Rachel did not make it. She died short of the destination and was buried there. But Leah, you did run well. You did run well because you were buried with the matriarchs and the patriarchs in the Bible. That's where you were buried. You ended well, Leah. It's not how we start in life that matters. The Bible says the end of a thing is better than the beginning. I understand your desire, Leah. I understand your disappointment, but take your disappointment to the Lord. I understand your pain, but you've got to come to the decision that I am going to serve the Lord comes what may. You've got to come to the decision, Leah, that I am going to praise the Lord with the last breath that is inside of me. The word of God says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. There is a praise on the inside of you that God is waiting for. But you've been too distracted to praise God in the way that he requires you to praise him because you are distracted by your enemies. But Leah, it is time to praise the Lord. Give birth to your praises. Leah was the mother, not just of priests, but of kings. And she bore Judah and Jesus came out of the tribe of Judah. What a blessing, Leah. What a blessing. What a way for God to end your story. But the end is tied up in your praise. And I just want to leave that with you this evening. And I also want to ask you, remember to share the video Thank you so much for joining. God bless you. I'm not sure which, which woman we're going to be looking at next week, but remember, we're on a 52-week Bible study. We're looking at women of the Bible, and we just want to share the word of God. We want to enjoy the word of God as we see ourselves in the word of God. God bless you. Have a wonderful night.